All right, to rotoscope means to paint over film, to paint over, you know, photographic imagery. And because I have this white layer at 50%, all my colors are slightly muted, which is actually very helpful. So what I'm going to do is keep it muted, but then on a new rotoscoped layer, which is here where I have my palette, I'm going to start painting. And the darkest, like he has his dark suit, color I'll use will be this kind of gray. So I know all of my rotoscope colors are already no more than 50% in their value. Okay, I'm not even going to zoom in too much. I'll zoom in a little bit. And it's not the same as tracing. It's like painting with um, or doing a drawing with vine charcoal at the start of a painting. So I'm going to make indicate some shadows that I think will be useful. And then I'm going to hold down Option and steal certain colors. And then I can even exaggerate a little bit, add some colors where I think I need them. And this is speed painting. I can even just steal them right from the painting underneath. Now my brush is loose. Sometimes I want to use the colors that are underneath. Sometimes I want to deviate from them a little bit. But notice I'm painting at 100% opacity with my customized brush, just to, to block in space. So I want to get some of these highlights. And it's going to look like a smudgy kind of makeup drawing. But it gets me started. It gives me a color range. It's got some green tones. I want to make sure I suggest those a little bit. It's got some purple. Now I can also throw in some odd colors here, which I usually like to do. And you'll see why later. And I can also pick those from my swatches. So if you want to push your color a little bit, just do that kind of thing. So that's going to make more difference when we start painting at lower opacities. So I'm just going to tuck those colors in a little bit. And the hardest thing with digital painting is not letting yourself get really tight. Try to stay pretty loose. And even though he's got different colors in his hair than in his skin, it's good as a painter to kind of use similar palettes most places. So there's some unity to your color choices. So I'll use some of the skin colors in the hair and some of the hair colors in the skin. And then I want more red. I need more pinks for him. So I'm going to add that in. That's extreme, I know. But you'll see, we're having fun. Okay, now the difficulty with rotoscoping is you keep seeing the, the photo underneath. And it, even though it's dimmed to 50%, it kind of loses power. So at some point you turn that off and you see what you get. Right. And you have a little kind of scatter map. Okay, so now I'm going to change my brush to only about a 60% opacity. And now I'm going to paint over what I have, merging it together a little bit. And at 50% opacity, see now that pink overlaps with some of the other colors. And I'm going to fill up the whites. Now, if I feel lost, I can always use my sketched lines, right? It shows me where the nose is, where the bridge of the nose is, where the nostrils are. 
because I don't want to just trace the photo. That's not going to look any better than the photo. If at best your digital painting can look like a photo, then you are just like a machine. So you want to make it more your own. And just like real painting, not every area has to be as interesting as every other area. Okay, so this is giving me kind of what's called a color script for how to deal with him. I'm also going to paint with white and put that in some of the highlights. And I can do that with the photo still on because this is now a 50% white. I want to make sure he doesn't get too washed out. Another nice thing about painting is we, even though he doesn't have anything really strong in his photo, I mean, his shirt's white, but other than that, there's not a whole lot. I get to set what the, um, the contrast is. And if I want to give him a red tie, I give him a red tie. This is just a little a little test. So I have a lot of hair to fill up. And then this is the phase I call kill whitey. So we're just trying to get rid of all this open white space. But choose the right colors. So this is very different than digital coloring because we're not just filling behind an outline that's already there. And I start stealing colors from myself. All these overlaps give me new colors. And I can paint those colors, but it, my core colors really matter because they're the ones that were painted at 100%. And I'm only painting at 50% right now. Okay, so I've almost got all the white kind of covered. And I've almost got my sketch covered up. That helps me work on uh, mapping it out. And I want maybe a bright orange in there. See, as they overlap, they can get darker. And then I can go back to rotoscoping. So I'm sure there's some shadows I missed. I think I want to get more purple tones on his chin. Ah, see, so we've pretty much filled them all in. So now, now what can I do? Let's take a little bit of the blue, mix that. Up, oh, I'm on the wrong layer. Be in my rotoscope layer. Take a little bit of the blue. Mix it with a little bit of 50% black. And this will be my suit and a base color. Paint that in. You see with the with only the 61% opacity and that scatter turned on, when I want to cover space, I can do it really quickly. And yet when I just touch lightly, I can still get a pretty nice fine line. So this is this is my multi-brush technique. I can't believe how broad his shoulders are in this, in this reference. Funny. Put some shadows. All right, so now I'm going to turn off the white layer underneath, right? So there I have all my painting. 
kind of rotoscoped on top of him. If I turn off my sketch lines, there it is. It's got a good start, but now with the, the full photo behind him, I see I can push this contrast deeper. So again, it's about kind of knocking out the whites, even if it's a white t-shirt or a white shirt that they're wearing, this white collared shirt, I still want to fill that in with paint. So this is the last step of killing whitey. Instead of a white fill layer, I put behind it a 50% gray fill layer. You can see how big a difference that makes. Now, to help it out, because I designed all of these with white behind, um, what I can do is paint behind, and you can use as many layers as you want, as long as you have white on the bottom. And I'm going to paint with white behind it. Oops, let's move that up above. Wherever that gray is washing it out. This is like how to sponge paint. And this has to do with your lighting as well. Now I'm not painting on my rotoscope layer, I'm painting on a layer underneath it. So you see, like that. And I'm still only painting at 61% opacity. But it helps me set up where I know highlights should be and where I don't want that middle gray coming through. All right. Now what I'm missing are a lot of details, especially in the parts that are less interesting. So what's the next phase? You take your photo reference and you move it off to the side. So you have something to look at and now steal full uh, saturated and dark colors from. Now I'm gonna go on top of my rotoscoped layer. Before I do anything, I could double it up. You see, just by duplicating it, because a lot of it's 50%, that makes it a little bit stronger. Then what I can do is play with its levels. So my rotoscope, I can push the levels. And that should immediately um, expand my contrast. And that is helpful, for sure. Okay, now a new layer on top. This is what I call my speed painting. Because I'm just gonna put it all into this one painting really quick using this brush the same brush i designed i'm going to start notice i'm not zooming in on details i'm going to start stealing these full color reference shadows and just doing my little details putting in details like the, the eyebrows painting at about 60 percent the eyes. I can steal colors from myself. I can steal colors from um, the reference, outlining kind of the, the wrinkles around his eyes, trying to get some of the orange tones. Around his face and his cheeks. And when working this way, you just, you try to just have lots of energy throughout. This is why when you see tutorials online, they're always sped up because you're just moving around and jumping from one part to another with mad energy. 
And you don't need to worry about making mistakes because you'll always paint over to define new edges as you go. Just the worst thing you can do really 